Thank you, Philip. I'm going to show the agenda for today's webinar, and I'm pretty sure uh, this webinar is ready for beginners and advanced users of Tecla structures. So in the beginning, I'm going to share some basic tips for Tecla structures beginners, download, reinstall, uninstall, uh, bridge creator, a short introduction of land XML files and project base points when used with bridge creator. Then we'll have the bridge creator basics, the library, the main user interface, uh, display uh, stations or changes uh, along those uh, road lines. Alternatives to land XML files, because some users, they don't have access to land XML files. So I'm going to show how to bring 3D road lines into Tecla structures to be used with Bridge Creator, and then model the superstructure, everything with Bridge Creator, including three different or four different decks, um, the finishes, uh, cast in situ, and some precast uh, example too, using components and profiles. In the end, I'll finish uploading the project to Trimble Connect uh, for uh, collaboration and mapping the materials of the highway, for instance, in, in order then to use the Tecla Visualizer in, in, to visualize our uh, project. Uh, in the end, and please drop as many questions as you want during the webinar, uh, and then in the end, we'll have a Q&A session. Enjoy, and hopefully you can learn something from today's webinar. See you in the end. What you see here in the screen, it is the final result of today's webinar. So from zero to this final product, simulating uh, three or four bridges in the same model, despite usually uh, this is not the normal workflow because each bridge should be inside one single model. If you go to Tecla Warehouse and you search for Bridge Creator, you will find always the latest version of this plugin for Tecla Structures. You'll have some details on this page. And then here in the very end, you can click and you jump into the Tecla support page of Bridge Creator. Now, let's open Tecla Structures, create a new model, go to Applications and Components, and then Manage Extensions, Extension Manager, and remove Bridge Creator. Then close your model and open again Tecla Structures. The extension is being uninstalled. You can close now and install the new version. Select Tecla Structures version you want, Bridge Creator, and keep or not the file. And when you open Tecla Structures again, the extension will be installed. So let's open the model once again. And the first thing I'm going to show is settings. Let's go to settings. And this is very important because Bridge Creator is going to read the units of these settings. So if you are in USA using an Imperial system, you need to change the settings for Imperial. And Bridge Creator is going to read those settings. In my case, I'm using metric system, millimeter, and I want three decimal places. Another important thing, this is mainly for beginners, is to do with phases. So we don't use levels, we don't use layers, we use phases, construction phases. And every object that Bridge Create is going to create that may belong to a specific uh, phase. For instance, uh, the piles or the foundations or the piers or the deck, all those objects, they should be placed in the correct phase in order then to help down the line for the bill of quantities, uh, bar bending shadows, or even the drawings to filter out uh, and even during the modeling uh, of the objects. So that is why during this demo, you're going to see once a while I'm placing the objects into the correct phase. And here in the end, I'm creating a bridge creator feature line phase, and you'll see why. I'm going to create some spe specific lines that are items, and I'm going to place inside that phase and I'll show that down the line. What I have here is the model folder for my project. I'm placing now a resource folder, and this resource folder is to support uh, today's uh, webinar, and I have a land XML inside and many other things that I'll be showing during the day. So land XML is a schema for rail or road, um, and we have the units, the header, the application, and then we have alignments, and this is what Bridge Creator needs, the alignment, 
which has the chord geometry element and the profile element. If you don't have these two sets of information, it's not going to work. Uh, for instance, we have here feature and we don't need feature at all. We just need profile and chord geometry. And you can see here the example I have maybe with the uh, six or seven lines and I know now that Bridge Creator can read. Another thing is it, this very first point here is the northing and the easting of that line. So I need those points because I don't want to use the original coordinates uh, inside Tecla Structures because it's too far away from zero. And you see, I'm inserting the model without project base point. And it's way too far from the zero, zero, zero. Uh, so what we need to do is to create, go to project properties and pro uh, base point and create your base point. So you've seen that we have northing and easting here, but that one is the easting and Tecla shows the easting first and then the northing. So in meters, then I take three decimal places to transform that in millimeters. And that is how very quick I have uh, my land XML near zero, zero. Obviously you should have the, maybe the beam execution plan and this information should be there. And maybe it's better to have some round numbers instead of uh, these uh, uh, numbers finishing in 431, for instance. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm just putting some easy numbers to have my land XML file near zero, zero. So now I'm, I'm launching Bridge Creator and I'm going to read this land XML file. We can read uh, text files, spreadsheets, or land XML files. And in this case, I want to read the land XML file. So I load the land XML file. Now I need to select what is my reference file line, which is the main line, the center line, and then the other lines I want. And remember to select the project base point. We can visualize or preview, and then we say, okay. From this moment, we are ready now to start uh, selecting a key section and extruding. Before that, I'm going to save. I'm using the, the name of the file that Bridge Creator um, creates uh, is going to match always the shape name because I'm going to have so many shapes inside Tecla Structures that it's very important for me to know which shape belongs to which file. So the file matches the name of the shape. I'm going out to my library, but the library is empty. So jumping into my resource folder, I brought with me two libraries. One is Caltran and the other one called library A. And I'm going to place that into the attributes folder of the model. This way you can share your libraries with your colleagues. And now if I go to library, I'll have all these objects that I previously created and placed inside the library of Bridge Creator. So let me just pick here one of these decks, maybe this one, and I have now a section. I'm going to give a station, and now I can preview the station. It's just a visualization, and I want to start my deck at the change uh, 300 and finish 350. Now I'm going to edit my cross section and replace the road lines. But before that, I need to introduce uh, the bridge creator lines. And we have four types of lines. We have alignment proxy. Those are rail or road uh, lines. Then we have virtual points uh, that are just support points. They don't do anything but just to support. And I will show some examples of it. We have outer face, uh, which is an outer face of our uh, object. And then the inner face uh, points uh, to create voids. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to replace my alignment proxy from my library, which is not matching my land XML lines. So, and I'm going to replace. It is interesting here that originally I had five lines and now I, I have only three lines. So I need to do some stuff here. So I need to get rid of this R2 line, but if I delete the line, uh, that line that's going to create a problem because I have points constrained to that line. So I need to do things 
uh, in a smart way. So now I have here this point three. If I delete, is going. Every time this happens, you can undo, Control Z, and you undo. And I'm just changing this the constraint of the point three to the point two to the point one. Sorry, and now I can delete the point two. So go there, delete the point two. Do the same on the other side. So first, I'm going already to constrain this to the point 11, 2.4 meters to the left, and I can delete the point 10 and the previous or old road line. Now I can do here something cool. We have different type of point or different uh, offset directions. And here I can type the angle, uh, 1.43, uh, for instance, and now I have there uh, any angle. Another thing do, we can do here is to use the plan between the point zero and one. So I change the defined by point pairs, and now if the plan of zero one changes, the plan between one and two will just keep going. So here is another way that is having one point constrained to two different plans because I wanted an offset of points six and five and five and four. So th this is a very quick way to, to show different uh, point types or offset directions. And here are the inner points. And we can see here, this virtual point is constrained to the road line. I can change that and my concrete is going to change uh, with it. Just to show that uh, virtual points, they can really be very useful. So I'm going to put it back and extrude. Here my visualization and extrude it. So this deck is straight in plan. Uh, I'm going to have examples uh, later with double curve deck. So this one is just a curve in profile, but it's straight in plan. Construction lines, be careful here. If you select construction lines, you're going to have construction lines in with the spacing that you define, in this case 0.2 interval, right? But then remember to untick. Uh, that box, because if not, every time you create or recreate the object, you're going to have one more construction line there. So I don't want construction lines. What I'm going to do is to untick and save. Now let's imagine you don't have your land XML file. You just can build any Tecla construction line. So we have here a construction object, in this case, a, a spline. And instead of reading the land XML file, I'm going to read that line is a polycurve block. But remember, in this case, we don't have project base point. So I'm going to save this as test two for the station. May keep the 300. And now we need to replace the road lines. So polycurve for the center line. And I need to do something with this old road line that's not there anymore, right? So I know more or less this zero is uh, 3.45 meters uh, offsetted. So let's just give a little bit more for, for uh, meter 750 and 200 down. Maybe it's too much, but for now let's keep it. Delete the old line. So maybe 100 is enough. And now here I'll do the same. My virtual point will be minus 4 meters 750. Just put this to constraint to the poly curve. So just to show that we can extrude um, objects along any Tecla construction line. So here the stations, the interval for triangulation, and then you create the object. And very fast, I just uh, reused uh, one file that um, previous with uh, I was using and just change the alignment from a file and XML file into a Tecla construction line. Let me show you something very, very interesting. If you go to the tab more, you can pick a construction line in this case, and you can change the name of that line. So let's call it center line test two. 
and now I can convert. And this is going to create a bridge creator fe feature line that can be saved inside a specific uh, line, a, a specific phase, and then reused later on. So in here now, I'm doing the same with the file uh, of land XML file. And I just converted the ML2 into a bridge creator feature line for feature use without the need to use the land XML uh, anymore, if I want. Now I just place that into the phase 20. Suppose you don't want that line to appear in, in a drawing, you can filter out the phase. So let's jump into the more and then manage tab. And let's draw the change on the alignment. Let's select the first alignment and then mid mouse click. And Tecla Structures, it's a beam software uh, and probably the only beam software, not specific for road or rail, that can do this. The change or stations are displayed for to support. And remember, this is the station, uh, not the length of the line to that point. So it's a horizontal horizontal projection of um, uh, the, the road. So let's get now an intersection. So I want to know the station of the intersection of these two roads. And we have here 164.620 meters. It is the station of the intersection of these two roads. And the layout point is going to keep information if you want then to even to tag it inside the drawing. It will be uh, an intelligent tag. So let's hide this and do the same for the bottom one. Select the line. And now I have 296, 309. It is the station for the, the road below. This can be very handy uh, for uh, bridge uh, designers. Sometimes we need to place objects into the a specific uh, change or station. So 142.15, I don't want to zoom, and now create. So now if I zoom to nearly 140, I have a layout point on that exact station. Very handy. So remember it's on tab more and then manage. So now let me show you something else. If you go to catalog, shape catalog, all these objects that Bridge Creator is um, creating, they are inside the shape catalog because they are items. So your lines and your extrusion, it's there. So I want to delete everything I've done here. I want to start from scratch. And you see the objects are still there. So if I really want to start uh, everything again, I know those objects were my old objects. I, I can delete that from the shape catalog. So now I'm back just with my reference file. So now imagine that you don't have the land XML file and you find it very difficult to draft the 3D polyline in Tecla structures uh, and to have the precise alignment of your bridge. So the uh, road alignment. You can use Rhino uh, and Rhino has the plugin Grasshopper and bring those lines into Tecla structures. And let's see how easy that is. So in my example here, I, I inserted D, DWG uh, road lines into Rhino, and I'm just opening Grasshopper, and I, I installed the Grasshopper Tecla Live Link, and here I'm just going to create four curves, because I want four different objects. Put the highway here on the first one, so set multiple curves, and now the first top road, the second top road, and the last one. Okay, so now I'm going here to this component, the Tecla component, that construction lines, and I want different colors, and so let me just create here a slider between color one and 10, and because now I can copy, change this to solid line, and I can copy four times, and then control the input from here. We could control the input in Tecla structures, but uh, I found it quicker to do this way. So let's bring that again and connect your set of curves. And you'll see that is the col color number one is not appearing, but uh, it will appear soon here. Now you can see the highway lines already there. 
let's just keep that one and now the, the second world and then the last world there and now changing the class so here so now i have three top roads where i want to model bridges for today's webinar and i have my uh, highway in order to bring then the the, the let's say the surfaces of the highway we could uh, easily loft um, the between the lines and bring that as a geometry into tecla structures so set one geometry there and now bring an item for tecla structures and then we'll have the surface inside tecla structures but i want to show a different way to do it so let's just delete this so let me go to here to the display and make sure my construction lines are visible and i can start working delete this old one and i have everything prepared to model three bridges and let's see how which creator i'm going to convert lines i i could use the construction line but i prefer to have uh, bridge creator feature lines because then i can change the name of those lines so here we can preview and see what is what so i'm going to call this is the road a center line left uh, two this one will be center line left one a center line and then right one and the last one a center line right two so try to here to get uh, some sorts of uh, standards so now I co i'm going to put and convert yeah so this is ready for the first let's do the same for the other one i keep bridge creator open and replace those lines so convert those lines and now very quick i'll do the same for this last road this one here if i want to convert something as you've seen before i need to go to the land xml file uh, put the project base point and now select the line and convert so I converted just one line for that uh, last one, just to give an example. Now I can draw the changes along the line just to show for my example, the alignment is starting from north in south direction. So which is going to create a little bit of a problem because when we do the section, we are seeing uh, inverted. So if I go to my research folder, I have some components and these components are uh, important because I, I've built this before and I want Bridge Creator to place some of those components um, in position, to put in position. So I can bring components one by one, uh, but I think it's much better to select everything you want from a different model and put everything inside a UEL file uh, and then import those uh, components or profiles into Tecla structures and then you can uh, control that so this is more for beginners uh, but here just uh, replacing and it is very accelerated uh, and you can find specific information for that when you want to bring components or profiles from a different model into your own uh, model there are many ways to do this and this one is just to show that I'm going to use uh, parapets and uh, vertical posts for the vehicle parapet uh, and those are components and I'm going to use um, the edge beam and the edge beam is a, a profile that I've created with a sketch editor and that is why I need to import all this and now is everything here if I want to use I can place it manually you know very well it's very time consuming now bridge creator can do that hard work for you so showing here a pier today i'm placing the pier manually okay I, I could have used bridge creator to place the pier into the correct uh, station but I, I will do it manually but everything is here ready to to work with bridge creator so now i'm going to bring the substructure uh, phase one two three from the previous model so my promise is everything now to finish the bridge only with bridge creator i have placed the pier manually for this demonstration everything else is going to be bridge creator 
I'm going to model here the just the highway and using lofted plates inside Tecla structures. So it's the same thing as you doing uh, with uh, Rhino. Uh, we could do it with Grasshopper, but in this case, it's so easy now to do with lofted plates because this is just for visualization and for our drawings or um, for our rendering using uh, Tecla Visualizer. So very fast, you can create here uh, the surface for the highway. I can change the, the class and the materials. And I'm changing the materials because later I want, I want to use the Tecla Visualizer and I'm mapping some materials that I don't use at all uh, and then in order later to change and you'll see why. So, but for now, let's keep it simple. Just change the class and then uh, change the material. So this one I'll change for something that I really don't use like here, tiles. So everything ready for later use, put everything into the phase highway, in this case 21, and let's keep going. So filter out, I don't want to see that phase. And I don't want to see construction lines because I want to use uh, bridge creator feature lines. So now I'm going to model one deck. So it will be the bridge L, uh, top row first, read the alignment, which is my land XML file with a project base point, and I only need two of those uh, lines, three of those lines, sorry, and I bring an empty section, type here the station for the start and end, and keep the same name for the shape, and now I can edit my empty um, section. So I have here this is a very good example because we are on change zero, the, the other two lines, they don't appear. They are all appear in zero, 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 right? Because those lines, they don't exist on station zero. So if I change that to a station, let's say 262, now a bridge creator can find those lines. So be aware that sometimes this happens. You cannot see the lines. They are all on top of each other. It's because bridge, bridge creator cannot find those lines. So here I'm just adding some... Uh, outer face points, and then changing the constraints. Uh, and you'll see more you work with Bridge Creator, faster you are, because the, it's very intuitive when you understand the mechanics of this. So I'm just changing here and adding points. When you want to add points, select the latest point uh, and add a point. Unless you want to add a point between two existing points, so select one of those two existing points and then change, it's easier. Very fast uh, to create that. We can see there the preview. Interval for triangulation, point two. Select then the phase you want to be and create the object. Object is created and ready to go. Now we can do the same for the other ones. Something that happens uh, is that you reuse what you've created before. In this case now, I'm changing from road L to X. I reload the lines I want. Remember, no project base point on the other roads, and now different name. Now we did the section and change the alignment proxy points to the correct ones. So west and east, very odd super elevation, but let's keep it like that, save and create. It's as easy as this to reuse. So we can use the library or we can reuse some other files already existing and just change. So I'm going to do the same. And now edit the section. And here I have a little bit more work. So replace the center line. Now replace my west, which is my right side, my right side one, and the east, that is the left side one. Now I need to add two lines. So select the line proxy and copy twice and change to R2 and L2. Now I just need to go and change my outer face points. So here, one, and now the three should be constrained, but before I need to create a point, and now constrained to the points. Let's see here better. So this one, I add one more point, is the point eight, but then I change the seven, and now I need to create one more and change the constraint. 
So when you create points and the points, they just swap, you can swap the order, right? And you'll see that is not that uh, complex. So once again, the top, the A road, And because the latest file, I had already five uh, lines, this one is going to be even faster. So, and this is obviously for the easy part of the, the, the extrusion and we'll get more complex objects. So now I'm filtering out that. I don't want to see is the phase 22 and I don't want to see my my asphalt. I'm going to my resource folder to and bring all the bridge creator files for these three bridges and going to paste that inside the attributes folder of this model. Right. So I don't want to replace the files that I already created and I want to reuse the files from a different model. So when I go to bridge creator and I go to the bridge, this one is the bridge L. I want my deck. So the, the, the road lines, we know already how to load. So we don't need to do that again. I'm going to show the section I have is a normal deck with the point uh, between three and four flat. And then I have some special points, uh, type two plus two, because they are uh, constrained to two different plans. So uh, there are some complexity even for this uh, simple deck. So I'm going to create this deck, which is very uh, straightforward. And I'm going to create a double curve deck. So this is the road X. So my deck one, I call deck two just because I want to replace uh, later on. So, and I'll show you uh, the deck. And now my M deck, which is the deck we've seen before with the opening and they're varying with different types uh, of depth. So. I start the span with a certain depth and then mid span uh, changes and then comes back to the to the similar depth and you see here the variation in depth for now is still a linear um, variation not parabolic parabolic uh, variation that will come uh, in the future and now one more deck here and this one has a particularity is that I created here some points because I want to do uh, precast um, uh, beams here. So this point 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, so 11 to 15 are points where I'm going to place uh, precast beams. So I have that uh, there because I want to use those points later. So create the deck. And now I have my deck. We don't see because it's uh, flat, we don't see the the um, those lines. So, but now if I load the deck, I'm going to replace this one because I, I want to show first uh, the beams. So let's do this. So we we know that we can extrude uh, decks, but now we can place beams, poly beams, or components constrained to those lines. Could be road lines, virtual points, or even uh, the the points of the the deck. And this is what I'm doing. I'm placing a profile, which is a Tecla beam called Y5A, now I give it a name because I'm going to pl place uh, five beams. Uh, I can change the material, I can change the class uh, and so on. So let's keep it simple. And now I say, where is the, the station I'm going to start? 280.5 and then the end station. And here now I need to decide what is the interval to place that beam or poly beam. And because I want a straight when I say 31 meters. Now, this is the positioning, traditional positioning of Tecla structures, with I, which uh, I say, uh, I know that is middle, top, behind, and now I'm constraining it to point 15 along next. And you'll see what is the difference between along next or known and so on. So uh, the deck now here temporarily, let me change this here to just a uh, flat um, cross-section for visualization purposes, and let's create. So now this beam, this is a Tecla beam, this is not an extrusion. And the beam is placed constrained to a concrete point that I decided before, and I can then decide if it is a beam, poly beam, and so on. So now I want uh, five beams. Now I'm just copy 
and changing names. A, B, C, D, E. The stations are the same, and I want just to change the constraint point. So 14, 15, and then 13, and so on, because I did the work uh, before. So I don't need to change anything else. It's just kind of you think how to do the the this, and then uh, you can uh, be faster because you reuse the objects. So now, remember, every time you um, extrude again, you recreate the objects, select the object. So keep the object selected when you are recreating the object. And th that is what I've done. So now I'm going to add any, um, any beam. And now I know I have this cross section PS slab 1A, which is a rectangle. Uh, but I can add something else and then change uh, the, the profile name, uh, which is um, 1487 times 50. So, and you saw that I inserted any um, uh, profile, so it doesn't matter. And then you change. So the, we have the stations already there and the interval 30 meters because I want to uh, precast um, formwork to be one meter shorter. So half meter it's each way. Uh, and then the positioning, and then it's going to be placed between 15 and 14, and that is the distance along next, because we, we want to go along the alignment. So here, just one uh, massive. I'll show an example with uh, uh, where we can change the interval. But for this example, uh, I'm just keeping uh, the 30 meters long um, horizontal, in this case, horizontal, uh, or straight, straight, sorry, straight um, precast uh, formwork. So now I can put the correct channels for the deck and we'll cover on top. Perfect. So let's do something different here with the second span. So one of the spans then is going to be wrong, but just for uh, demo purposes, uh, let's do different. If I load the deck to B, and if I jump into the components, so first let me do here this. So let me show you that. It is exa exactly the same thing. The only difference is that I choose polybeam and I change the interval. And of course the, the stations are different, but are the only difference is there. And here's the same thing. So you see the, the profile is the same, but I picked as a beam and I changed the interval of two meters. And then the interval for the beams so is now a Tecla polybeam placed, and then we have the, the rectangles, which are the precast formwork placed every two meters. Let's change that to one meter. Remember that the object should be selected when you change, and now create. And now everything changes to one meter long. So let's put it back to two meters. That's it. And the beam is a Tecla beam uh, based on a profile that I've created, a Y beam, uh, and that is placed as a poly beam, not a straight beam. The advantage of using Bridge Creator for the abutments is that uh, many times to cut the object on top, you see here, it was a big problem because I had the object selected and I choose create. So I clicked create, so now I lost the object. So I need to put it back and if we, when you are creating first time, don't select anything. And then only when you are recreating, keep the object selected. So all this is with Bridge Creator. We, if we are on a double curve um, alignment, uh, so the side and the top, uh, it is always um, is in curve. So it will help a lot. So here to place the approach slab, I had two points there that I wanted to place my corbel and my approach slab. So between the point, uh, let's just change that to the point eight, and you'll see that's there. And that's a is a Tecla uh, TRPBL uh, profile uh, that is a corbel that I'm just placing there, uh, constrained to some points that I had before. In this case, I'm constraining to concrete points, could be road points or virtual points. So and then I change the positioning and have that in place. So we have here a double curved uh, wing wall, the other side that varies the start and end. And then I'll do here the top, just load here the deck and 
recreate the deck and now I'm going to load the other side of the abutment. So to build this abutment, you can see that we have the lines there. We know, we always know where the points are going to be. It's like when we build a traditional way in CAD and we know the constraints are always the same. So we create the deck and then the other sections, they follow and we we keep we can keep virtual points there as a support anyway. So now on top, so this one is a game changer. We have edge beams. So always with the same idea, it is a Tecla profile that I'm going to place there. This one is for the curbs. Uh, in USA is curb. Um, here is for the pedestrian uh, vehicle parapet. Uh, that uh, is a component. So instead of uh, uh, is a component made of a Tecla objects. Uh, and then I will have uh, those objects constrained to certain points. And those points are always the same. Uh, we we have the the edge of the deck and then some and then we have the end uh, of the the road itself before we place the 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 rail for instance or the pedestrian parapet. So it's the same idea. Everything is components or Tecla uh, beams based on Tecla profiles. So it's just changing constraints here and placing the pipes and placing the, the top of the walkway. So in one go, I'm going to have everything on top of my bridge. So in this bridge, I think the example is straight, but uh, you know that I have road already here, uh, in curve, sorry, and that you'll see what's happening. Something is missing here. Uh, I see that the rail uh, profile that I've used uh, is not inside this model, so I may need to replace uh, that uh, profile. So select the object, and now I need to go to the rail and just put there uh, any other type. So I don't have UNP. I'm using the UK environment here. Uh, I'm replacing for the RSC uh, profile, and that's it, save, and I'll replace. Create, okay, just uh, put the same name again. If loses the name, keep the name, the same name, okay? And I'll create. And now I have my profile. You saw uh, the video is accelerated twice, uh, and you've, you've seen how fast it is just to replace something that was broken. So let's do another bridge. So now here I'm going to load uh, the other abutments. They, they were all created in the same way. Uh, the work I've done bef uh, before, it was to change the road uh, lines, uh, but I kept the constraints and you can see that the, the stations are exactly the same uh, just for the sake of, of the demo. That never happens in real life, but uh, was just a matter of reusing the file, saving with a different name uh, for a different bridge and uh, uh, changing the road lines. So all the rest is the same, but the decks are always different. So I'll stop uh, when we have a different deck. Here, deck two, with the varying, and now you'll see the version two of this deck. I have exactly the same things uh, over there. So the same thing here, I don't have that rail that I needed to replace with a longitudinal rail. Uh, I'll do that other day. So let's do it again with a different, uh, once again, a di different, um, and let's see how can we uh, reuse this. So the deck one had no components there. I'm going to call it X deck and save that into my library first, right? So now I want to place all my parapets and all my finishes, but now first I saved my uh, cross-section. I know the, the stations. I go to a previous one that I've created already. I delete everything. I save with a proper name. I change the lines. And now I'm loading from the library the section that I've created. So this way, it's the components were more work than doing this way. So 
I need to change the name, be careful with that. So is the X, this one is the X uh, deck two. And now I can change, replace the road lines. But here, everything is there already and I just need to change some some points and I know my points in this case 0 1 and 3 and 4 they were different points uh, on a previous example but we know always the in this case they are always those points so my 11 changes to 1 so every time I find an 11 change to 1 and every time I find a 2 change to 3 so and I'll keep uh, doing this until uh, getting to the end. I know the rails, they have the wrong <laughs> the wrong profile, but let's just uh, move on. And here, replacing all this. You know, save, check your uh, change, and you saw that it's faster doing this way than creating everything from scratch. When I press create, I have everything there. Right, so now, I, of course, I'm going to load my abutment files. So it's done. I still don't have my rail. Yeah, it's lost there. We know already how to place the correct uh, rail, so it's not a big deal. And we have no time to do the fourth uh, bridge. What I want to show you now is we, we go to Trimble Connect, uh, give a name, and let's export uh, our project, uh, all the objects, to the Trimble Connect um, command data environment in order to collaborate with our uh, colleagues, road colleagues, or even other uh, bridge designers to do visualization, taking some uh, information from the model, create to-dos, and so on. So I have here the project, and let's close and show just one more thing. So we have here our highway. You, 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 you have seen me changing the materials and the idea is to go to the Tecla Visualize. So remember that I've changed the material and now I need to map. I go to the mapping and look for tiles and plywood. So I put the plywood as grass and the tiles as dark gravel, right? I'm not going to do the other ones. The other ones are concrete and uh, I'm, I don't bother to check every material. This is just to show you how fast could be just mapping material. So I know my concrete is uh, undefined, so I'll change that to concrete and now I can visualize and you'll see how fast this is. So this is inside Tecla Structures. We have the same for Trimble Connect and this very fast rendering, um, render uh, engine based on Unity and we have our visualization. It's a very fast Tecla Structures and uh, the visualizer usually, they are very fast. And they have four bridges here, adding some um, viewpoints and then just play the video and we can um, of course, uh, control the positioning of the the sun and so on. So here, the intensity of the sun, the positioning of the sun, and the height, yeah, of the sun. So very nice solution for us bridges. Our clients like to see the bridges. I hope you enjoyed. Purpose of this uh, webinar wasn't to to teach um, bridge creator back to back. Uh, we will do that uh, on a later um, date, but was just to show that it's possible to create complex um, objects and now to place any beam, poly beam or component along uh, any type of line. Could be based on land XML file, could be a construction line. Not only for bridges, but for bridges is always very time consuming placing those objects. But I can see many ways to place these. I'm now ready for questions. Thank you.